The cheapest I found this graphics card online is around $100. Um, they got the more premium, quote unquote, models, like from Sapphire, for about $150. Um, this is Norwegian Kroner, so don't don't pay attention to this. Yeah, um, and uh, they can go up to two hundred dollars, which is not. I will stay clear away from that. So yeah, so on average, you can pick this up for about a hundred dollars. Slap this into your system and convert your little potato machine into a gaming rig. So yeah, let's get into some gaming and find out. All right, guys, there is a thing that we do need to address here in case you guys are not, are not aware. Um, this card is actually a 4-gen four, um, PCIe uh, graphics card, okay? So it's PCIe Express 4.0, but it is limited to 8 lanes instead of 16, okay? Now, the CPU and motherboard that I am running this... Um, this graphics card on only supports PCIe 3.0 so basically this is what's happening and this is why th this is important you're running this card at PCIe 3.0 by 8 so this could be a um, hmm, how do I want to say this a bottleneck okay because you're not running at 16 lanes you're running at 8 lanes at 3.0 now, if you were running at eight lanes by four, by you know PCI 4.0, this wouldn't be an issue because uh, just the bandwidth here, you know, the generational difference will more than make up for the the half of the bandwidth here. But uh, you're here, you're also adding another, you know, uh, choking point. You're not a, another bottleneck. Um, how will this affect this little GPU? I don't know because I'm not going to test that. The reason why I won't test that is because if you're buying this graphic card, this graphics card, you're buying it to put it into a. I'm assuming you would you would buy it to upgrade your existing little HP or Dell, you know, um, little desktop, and you want to do some gaming, you know, and you, you're on a budget, so this is what you can afford. This is what you will expect. This is what I will expect to see now. If it is that if if you happen to have a desktop PC with the motherboard that supports PCIe 4.0 and the CPU also supports PCIe 4.0, even better for you. Okay, so whether you will see better FPS or not, I I cannot tell you that uh, because I'm not going to test that. I'm testing this for uh, more realistic scenario, like with the type of person you know you you that you're you're looking to buy. A graphics car like this. Who who will buy a graphics car like this? B four fifty, B three fifty motherboard, you know, something like that, or Intel's uh, previous generations where PCIe four point is just not a thing. Um, so that's why I'm doing it in this configuration. But still, I think you will like what you're about to see uh, using this little GPU. All right, so let's get into the video. Man, I really made a mess of this card. I thought I'd be able to give it some bling, you know, by like painting it red. But, uh, no. You will not laugh! You will not cry! No. And maybe I'll get an extra 10 FPS by doing so. Anyway, who cares? We're gonna be testing it, anyway. So, to see if it fits worth paying for it in 2024, if you can get it for a good, pri a good price in the uh, used market. Um, eight gigabytes of, of VRAM, not bad, but how is the actual performance on this thing? Let's find out. All right, guys, here we are with Far Cry 6. Let's check our graphics. As you can see, 1080p. Uh, let's bump this up to native. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, we want to keep that. Um, let's see what the difference is. Can you guys notice that on the right side there? Okay, let's go with high, yeah? High settings. Uh, did we keep our... Yeah, we did. Okay. 
So we're good. Let's try high settings and see how this goes. Reset. Okay. So let's take this guy out. There we go. There it is. Okay. Careful, Danny. Will I be able to get in there? No. Let's see. Yep. Five FPS average. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Okay, what did I just get sprayed with? All right, so let's uh, find the rest of these guys and eliminate them. Where are you at? Oh, there's some voices over there. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, where are you going? Uh-uh. Get over here. Oh, someone else over here? Yep. Hello! Sucker. What? What is that? Okay, okay, I think I'm supposed to go up there. Let's see if there's a way to exit out of here. This way? Yeah, there is a... Hello! Okay. Let's get out of here. Let's go up there. 66 FPS! Wow! Very nice. Very high settings, 1080p. Very impressive. What? Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. Stupid. I don't want to kill you. Get out of here. You're cute and fluffy. Oh yeah, man, look at this. Woohoo. Yep, 10 gigabytes. It does like the, um, it does like system memory. Just keep that in mind. Oh, sucker. Oh, give me that horse. Oh, okay. Poor horse. I killed him. Get out of here. What's up? What's up? What you got? Nothing. Alright. So, yeah. As you guys can see, 64 FPS at high settings. At high settings. Um, man, Far Cry 6 on this card at 1080p looks... Phenomenal at high settings. I could probably get away with Konya. higher settings, but uh, I think this is pretty reasonable. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here. Uh, just a quick benchmark. Uh, but this should give you a very good idea of what you can expect with this graphics card. Um, man, very impressive. Holy cow. Alright, we leave it here, guys. Alright, so Hogwarts Legacy. Let's see what we're dealing with here. As far as settings. Let me clear this. So we're at 1080p. No type of upscaling or anything like that. And the recommended settings. And that's it. Alright, let's play the game. See how this looks. Let's reset. Let's go. As you can see, uh, this game does love I system RAM. I how nice it is to breathe fresh air after being cooped up in ancient rooms. Um, Grave and mistake to take it as an elective class, believe me. Yeah, Th that 8 gigabyte frame buffer is definitely so going to help really you here. Call it elective when your mother was the one who elected that you take it. I'm running at 51 FPS how at the recommended settings. This time of year? Not bad, but, to visit at Christmas. you know, the game is playable, like I always year, say. I would rather be indoors. <laughs> Not much for the gold, are you? But if um, uh, 144 hertz or so above that is what you're looking for, you're not going to get it with this little card. I did not grow up around snow. 
However, it will play the game for you. If you're just if you're just willing to sacrifice oh, some over here. graphic settings. I often spot lace wing flies in this area. But as you can see, oh? What's so all textures are there, that? nothing is missing. They are interesting to look at. But if you stew them, and the game just overall feels smooth. You know, I, I can't see any like anything look, that jumps out at me. Like if fight. you look at the frame time, everything is smooth, pretty steady. The lows I heard rumors that are pretty uh, consistent as well. So yeah, the car does play the game Absolutely. relatively well. I mean, for being what it is, a hundred dollars for this card and it's playing Hogwarts Legacy. Recommend the settings, granted. Why is it off limits? But I say that this card is very attractive because of that eight gigabyte frame buffer. It's just it will help. Now we do get some um, dips here in the frame time or stutters. I would spend all of my time exploring if I could. But yeah. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it here. I think you guys get the point. Uh, we are in the open world with all the textures and everything else. So this is what you can expect with this little card playing Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p medium settings. All right. So now moving on to Remnant 2. 1080p. No type of upscaling or anything like that. Medium settings graphics and this is where you want to have it if you want to be able to play the game um, it is pretty taxing on the GPU and you can see the frame times is all over the place so yeah this this game is pretty graphically demanding um, not this card I would not recommend for this game uh, you see some stutters there some dips Especially now that we are in the open world. Um, <clears throat> if you don't mind playing a console 30 FPS, I guess you'll be okay. But um, otherwise, you will need something else. And now, can the card play the game? Yeah, of course. It can, but. Um, it, you will. Have to lower your graphics to maybe low. I'm running here at medium as I show you guys. So, yeah. This thing is <laughs> pretty demanding, so. Anyway. I don't want to keep repeating myself. Uh, I think you guys by now get the point. Uh, Remnant 2 is a beautiful game, by the way. Um, very graphically demanding. But nevertheless, it is a very beautiful game. Um, if you don't mind, like I said, if you don't mind uh, the low FPS, the card can play the game. This, this. <laughs> Anyway, I think you guys get the point. So, 31 FPS, average, uh, Remnant 2, 1080p, medium settings. All right, guys, Horizon Zero Dawn. Let's look at the graphics settings. 1080p, no upscaling or of any kind. Original settings, okay? Um, now, with this game, I was actually pretty impressed um, because it is a even at 1080p at original settings it can tax your system it can tax your GPU but man this thing is running yeah okay 50 average FPS but okay look at this as I span around like the character smooth no issues here um, and this is where that eight gigabyte frame buffer shines for this little card. Um, again, 100 bucks and is able to play this game relatively smooth um, because 
um, it's got that eight gigabyte frame buffer. I mean, this thing likes memory, system memory, and graphics memory, and VRAM, you know, I should say. Um, but that VRAM here, it's helping this thing. Look at this, no hard dips, no, nothing like that. Now, as we enter this area here, you will see some stutters because this is where things get loaded into VRAM and whatnot. So every card that I own does this in this area here. I don't know why that is, but I, I think it is, it is due to things loading into VRAM and whatnot. But okay, as we continue along in the game, you can see that um, we're still, you know, riding at 54 FPS average. And you can get better performance if you're willing to just set your graphic settings a little lower. I set this at where we are right now because uh, I wanted to push it a little bit, you know, and give you a more realistic uh, scenario as to what you can expect with this card. And so far so good it's not pushing over that eight gigabyte frame buffer either so that is good man i am impressed i have to say i am impressed with this little graphics card wow for 100 bucks uh, we're just gonna keep going here straight and um, I hope that you guys understand why I do this. Like I, I just go walking around, you know, it may seem boring, but um, I'm not doing any like fighting or anything like that thing exciting, but w I'm not here to play the game. I'm here to benchmark it. I'm here to test um, the graphics card, its capabilities. Um, and yeah, you will see some dips here as we're starting to reach that eight gigabyte frame buffer. And all textures are there. If you if we stop and look around, nothing is missing. Everything is where it's, everything looks as it should. Very impressed. This is a very nice little card for one hundred bucks. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but I, I am I am impressed. Yeah. You know. Can we go in here? No, we can't. All right, well, yeah, I think you guys get the point. I will stop this one here. I don't want to drag this along. Um, 57 FPS average on Horizon Zero Dawn on the RX 5500 XT. All right, so here we are at Crisis 3 Remastered. Um, let's look at the graphic settings. Set to high. I set the system spec to high as well. I don't know why it shows us custom. Okay. They had a wow. okay. I don't know what the heck that was. Let's reset that. Alright, here we go. Oh man, look at this game. It still looks so beautiful. Wow. Even at high settings, it looks amazing. Yep, and um, not too demanding on the VRAM or oh, no. system RAM. Minefield. You know, I wouldn't trust Cell to be completely honest. Well, that's that's better. That should be enough. Come on. Warning. IMS detonation detected in sector one. Delta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy cow. Just an energy search. Energy source depleted. Gone now. Scanning Delta Okay, let's go. Okay, this is how it's gonna work. I'll call out the locations as I see them. Like this one in Sector 1, Delta Zero. These potential gas locations. Our primary target is Tower 3 Delta 3. As soon as you get the hardware, we'll knock the bastard out cold. Sector 1 Delta 3. Looks good. There. But yeah, Sector as you can see, uh, Crisis 3 looks amazing. 
<laughs> uh, even on this little card, uh, yeah, okay, we're at 55 FPS, but still, um, the, the game runs pretty smooth, in my opinion, and um, no hiccups, no stutters or anything like that. And the game just simply looks amazing, so. Yep. Just keep going. Yeah, we don't care. Ah, care about that. All right, I think we'll leave it here. You guys get the point. And here we have Cyberpunk 2077. Let's look at the graphics settings. Um, I have set it to medium because that's just what makes sense and the game still looks remarkably well. Um, I will use the automatic settings so this by default enables AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1 so I'm just going to not mess with anything else. 1080p, full screen, no, nothing else. So let's go. Let's go for a little drive, as we always do. And the game looks good, in my opinion. I don't see any um, missing textures or anything like that. No hard dips. It's running good, I think. Now remember, this is a $100 graphics card. Um, playing this game at 1080p medium settings. And averaging 55 FPS. So... Can I play Cyberpunk? Oh yeah. And it looks pretty smooth. I mean, look at this. For 100 bucks. Oops. I don't have insurance, so... Oh boy. But yeah, guys, I mean, for $100, jeez, you can convert your little potato machine, your, you know, HP or Dell computer into a gaming machine. For 100 bucks. I mean, yeah, granted your CPU will have to be able to keep up with it, but I'm sure you guys will figure something out, right? We're not talking about CPUs or anything like that today, we're just talking about this card. Oops, that was a hard dip. But I think that's just stuff loading into frame buffer, so no worries. Game is running very smooth, I think. Yep. So yeah, the RX 5500 XC can play Cyberpunk, granted 1080p medium settings. Uh, you will have some dips like that, yeah, as you saw there. But um, yeah, it can play the game. So okay, I'm gonna leave it here, 55 FPS average for Cyberpunk. Alright guys, here we are at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's take a look at the graphics settings. Have the graphics set to high. 1080p. Um, we'll change this to native, where it should be. And that's it. That's all the changes that we've made. Alright. Just gonna reset this. Get rid of that right side panel there. And let's just go Bring for a quick run. Right after we take care of this guy here. And this guy. Holy cow, alright. 
this guy's just playing hard. All right. So let's go for a little run. And here, we're just testing the. Um... Okay. Yeah. You know what? Let's. let's... Oops, sorry. These are my guys. What am I doing? Oh. Holy moly! Man, this guy's got an impressive swing. Holy cow! All right, but we're playing at 53 FPS, uh, high settings, 1080p. Um, very doable. Man, this car, this card is something else. <laughs> 100 bucks is playing every single game that I've thrown. At. I mean, granted, yeah, you have to give up some some graphic settings, but uh, what can you expect? I mean, seriously. Nah, we're not going to carry this guy. Yes. All right. So we did pretty good here. We raided and pillaged. Let's take care of this last guy here. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's see what it looks like in the water. All right. 6.6 gigabytes on that frame buffer. So, yep. 8 gigabytes will definitely help this thing. Run up the sail. Okay, over the water we're averaging 53. And uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it here, guys. Uh, Assassin's Street Valhalla runs pretty decent, decently in this uh, with this graphics card. Um, you could lower the settings from high to medium and boost your FPS. I just wanted to push this little part a little bit just to see what it would do. Um, it runs the game, in my opinion, flawlessly, no issues. Um, so yeah, I think we'll leave it here. Very nice. I like it so far. Alright fellas, so we're gonna bring this video to a close here with Grand Theft Auto 5, everyone's favorite, like I always say. Um, 1080p um, anti-aliasing set to two times anti-aliasing. Very high details, as you can see. And our advanced graphics are set to that. All right. Let's reset. Let's go for a little drive on my rat rod. Your car is a so Jeez. You know what? Last time I, uh, I made a video like this with Grand Theft Auto, one of the NPCs was cursing and YouTube <laughs> demonetized the video because of that. Um, but so I submitted a, um, like, you know, a complaint, like, um, how do you say that? Whatever. And they they restored the video back on. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, their AI or if there's actually people. Uh, I highly doubt that there's actually people going through every single video. Um, you know, censoring it or whatever. Yeah. But uh, anyway, back to the game. Uh, running at 60 average, 60 FPS average. Smooth as butter. No hard dips or anything like that. And that six, or not six, eight gigabyte frame buffers is definitely helping this little thing here. Um, otherwise, we'll be man, it will be a stuttery mess. But look at this thing. Oh. And let's look around. Look at this. Steady 60 FPS average. Um, and we're in the city. This is where, you know, you got all the physics and all the AI, all these stupid bots going around. So you got lucky, buddy. The graphics card does get a. Hey, it takes a hit here, typically. But not this thing. Look at this. Very nice. Alright guys, I think I'm going to leave the video here. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll help the channel grow. 
I appreciate all your comments, all your likes. Uh, if you didn't like the video, you know what to do. But uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.